Auto-detecting hardware isn't just a neat trick. It makes our projects smarter, simpler and more user-friendly. It's a win for both users and developers. Let's see how we can build it. Gritzy YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, bringing you a new episode with fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you'll always sit in the first row. We love the variety of microcontroller boards available. However, each board has different pin assignments and adding optional sensors makes things even trickier. Today, we'll solve this by implementing auto detection for boards and sensors. Modern projects like Tasmota and ASP Home use auto detection to support multiple boards and sensors, which is excellent if you want to publish your code or use it for different boards. In my last video, I built a GPS synced NTP server using a Raspberry Pi. Viewers suggested an ESP32 instead, so I tried it. Because Ethernet is better than Wi-Fi for precise timing, I had the choice of two ESP32 Ethernet boards. One with PoE and this smaller and cheaper one without. I wanted a single sketch to work on both boards, without manual adjustments. How to make a sketch that auto-detects boards? First, create various strategies for how our sketch can auto-detect boards. Second, decide on how to perform the board selection process. And third, extend it to optional I2C sensors. Fourth, find out how we can deal with crashing MCUs. And finally, use my NTP server project as a test. Let's start with the strategies. To make a sketch adaptable to different boards, we first define which boards we want to support and then check their pin assignments and differences. We store these pin setups as board configurations. The sketch should include a function that cycles through these configurations until it finds the correct one. If no match is found, it stops and alerts the user. But what if all pins are the same? In that case, we have two options. First, we can use the same sketch because the boards are nearly identical. And second, if they differ, we need another way to distinguish them. Good examples for the second situations are I2C sensors. Fortunately, Adafruit provides a list of addresses for most available sensors. Just like before, we can try initializing each sensor. If it responds, we know which one is connected. Simple and effective. One important note. This method only works for boards with the same processor. If you're dealing with different chips, like the ESP32C3 or S3, you'll need separate bin files. Now that we have a strategy, let's implement it on an ESP32. The code is on my GitHub, link is in the description. I started by listing all ESP32 pins and asked ChatGPT to create a table comparing pin usage across the two boards. From this, I identified key differences. For example, an NTP server needs specific pins for Ethernet and GPS chips. While both boards use similar Ethernet pins, which don't help with detection, but also don't interfere, power pins differ and can be used to identify the board. Later, I'll explain a universal method to check if a pin is connected. But for Ethernet and LoRa chips, there is a simpler approach. Try initializing the chip with one configuration and see if it works. If not, try the next one. Sounds easy, right? Well, it's trickier than it seems. Now let's talk about detecting signals on input pins. There is a simple trick. Configure the pin with input pull-up. In this mode, the pin should read high by default. If an external circuit pulls it low, the function returns true. If nothing is detected, the function then sets the pin to input pull down. In this configuration, the pin should read low by default. If an external circuit pulls it high, 
the function again returns true and we know that something is connected to this pin. By repeating this for a short period, we can even detect fluctuating signals. Now we have a clear strategy. Define which boards the sketch should support. Identify pins that can distinguish them. Run tests on these pins to determine the board. For I2C sensors, use their addresses since they share the same pins. Sometimes, like Sherlock Holmes, you must hunt for hidden tricks to make things work. Often you will encounter a problem like this. The Ethernet library only allows one initialization per run. If the first attempt fails and you try another configuration, the sketch stops, even if the pins are correct. The solution? Reboot before the next test and use this trick. The sketch stores the next configuration in EEPROM, so after rebooting it tries that one. If it reaches the last option, without success it gives up. An added benefit? Once the correct board is found, the configuration is saved in EEPROM. The sketch then skips detection on future starts, saving time. Another useful trick, if you ever need to start fresh, just select Erase EEPROM during flashing. This resets everything, forcing the sketch to test all configurations again. Perfect. Now let's look at how our NTP server sketch detects the board. I wrapped the detection logic into a function called DetectBoard, which returns the correct configuration number. You can easily adapt this for your own projects with different chips. The relevant pins for each configuration are stored in the board's structure. In my example, I included all used pins, but you can define constant ones like the GPS connection separately. I prefer keeping everything in one place. It makes it easier to spot mistakes in pin assignments. First problem solved. Now let's test, is the pin connected? using the GPS receiver's PPS pin. This function should handle it, and yes, it correctly detects whether the GPS receiver is connected or not. Cool! Now let's move on to I2C sensors, even if I do not use one for my project. Suppose we want to support these four options. Since multiple sensors share the address 0x77, we can't rely on the address alone. Instead, we use the same trick as before. Try initializing each sensor. If it responds, we know which one is connected. This time, there is no need for a reboot. And since initialization is quick, we don't need to store the result in EEPROM. As a last resort, if nothing else works, or if we only have output pins to distinguish ports, there is another trick. Select an unused pin and connect it to ground on board number one, leave it floating on board number two and connect it to VCC on board number three. This way a single pin can identify up to three different boards. Not too shabby. Key takeaways from this episode. Auto-detecting boards makes sketches more user-friendly and easier to maintain. Users don't need to configure anything and programmers only manage one sketch. Start by defining supported boards, then find key pins to distinguish them and store these in a structure. Detection logic runs through configurations, trying to initialize chips until one works. Some cases require a reboot between tests, so we use EEPROM to remember the last tried configuration. I2C sensors can be identified by their addresses or by initializing them one by one. For single pins, toggling between pull up and pull down can help detect connections. As a last resort, a simple jumper to ground, floating or VCC can tell the sketch which board it is on. Oh, and one more thing. ChatGPT again helped me with this project. I must admit, coding became faster 
easier and way more fun. No complex prompts are needed for quick and powerful results. You have to try it. That was all for today. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. If you found this video useful or interesting, please support the channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.